All right, hello and good morning. We might as well get started. I find this crowd tends to be quite punctual, so we may as well start. And if people are coming in after we begin, then uh, no problem, they can, uh, they can catch up. Uh, good morning, my name is Caroline Hislop. I am uh, from the University of Ottawa in Canada, and I'm here with my colleague, Alison Hitchens, from the University of Waterloo. Uh, thank you for being here for our talk this morning about research data management uh, strategies and their implementation. We'll be talking a lot about the Canadian context, but I'm sure you will find that there's quite a lot of overlap and parallels between the American context as well. Um, we have two main purposes for our uh, discussion this morning. Uh, the first is to talk about a workshop that was held at the University of Waterloo in September about research data management and uh, implementing research data management institutional strategies. I think some of you were at that workshop, so it's nice to see you again. And for those of you who weren't, uh, this will be a nice opportunity for you to learn about uh, what was talked about, what came out of it, and where we're going forward. And the second um, purpose of our conversation today is really to have a conversation with you, to hear a little bit more um, from the folks in this audience about how you're dealing with the research data management institutional strategy development and or implementation. So we've left lots of time at the end for uh, questions, comments, and conversation. So uh, we're really uh, looking forward to that. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to my colleague, Allison. Hey, thanks, Caroline. So before we get um, going into the workshop, just for uh, those who aren't aware, a little bit about the Canadian context. Um, so our tri-agencies, which are the three major federal funding bodies for research, uh, put out a research data management policy in 2021. And one aspect of that policy was that the Canadian institutions that were receiving research funding had to develop institutional strategies and have those published by March 2023. Um, at the same time for our researchers, there were going to be some requirements around data management plans and data deposit. On the data management plan side, it's rolling out slowly through some pilots and different grants just so they can kind of see what the processes are like, what the feedback is from the researchers, from the committees that are, are reviewing the grants, uh, things like that. And in the future, we'll hear some more from the tri-agencies on how the data deposit is going to work, but we don't have that information yet. So at our institutions, we each had this task of developing these institutional strategies. Uh, it probably differed a little bit from institution to institution about who led that, the library, the Office of Research, um, whether it was a collaborative um, approach like we did at Waterloo, um, but involved conversations with library, IT, and uh, research. And so we worked on those institutional strategies and then you get to the end of that and you think, okay, now we have to implement it. And that seems like a much daunting, more daunting task than creating the strategy, even though that in itself was a lot of work. And for us at Waterloo around that same time, as we were thinking about what to go next, I will also actually say that there was conversations at the national level. So our Digital Research Alliance of Canada did need some webinars for institutions on how you might go about doing your institutional strategies. We had some Zoom calls and some chance for small group conversations. So we'd already had at least some interaction with each other. But as we were thinking about kind of the what next at Waterloo, at that same time, um, Ithaca SNR had put out a call for um, a cohort around research data management. And although we didn't decide to take part in that because we'd already kind of done the gap analysis with our researchers, we were at a certain state that was a different spot than where that research project was at, we thought, oh, cohort, that's a good idea. Let's, how do we bring people together? Maybe we can work on this problem um, with, with other institutions that are also working on this problem. So uh, Ian, who's my colleague in the Office of Research, who's my co-chair for the RDM strategy, and Beth, our university librarian, we reached out to Caroline at Ottawa and also to Jen Abel at Calgary and said, would you like to partner on um, a SHRC, that's our Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council Connections Grant to do some sort of workshop on research data management where we could maybe establish some sort of cohort of folks in Canada who, who want to uh, continue this conversation together. And what we were originally thinking about was about 10 institutions, right? About 30 people in a workshop. Each institution would bring someone from library, someone from the Office of Research, someone from IT, so we could have these um, um, conversations. 
And we got, the call for participation went out, we had interest from 33 institutions. And it's kind of hard to turn down your colleagues who are also grappling with the same <laughs> issues as you. And so luckily our um, university librarian and our VP research decided to, to fund um, a little extra money for us so that we could accept everyone who wanted to come. And so we, our, our size of our workshop went from like you know, 30 to over 100 once you added the speakers in there. And we really wanted to concentrate the workshop on conversation, but ground it in some panels. So we had uh, you know, a grounding panel that had folks from like the tri-agencies, from the Alliance, from Compute Ontario, um, and from um, a, a group of librarians who are analyzing our institutional strategies, and they'll be publishing on that as uh, some grounding. We also had a panel of researchers, because it was really important, of course, to ground this all in researchers, because we're, this is who we're trying to support, um, including making sure we had some information around um, Indigenous research. And then we also asked Rebecca Bryant from OCLC Research to give a presentation on the social interoperability of research that um, OCLC had published a, a while back to help ground some conversations. And we had support also from the Canadian Association of Research Library um, as well in helping us to um, organize and facilitate some of these um, conversations. So we had some really good um, conversations. People really appreciated that chance to get together, especially across library research and IT. And what Carolyn's gonna walk you through now is some of the themes that came out of this and the recommend, some of the recommendations that came out on the day, and then I'll take you through next steps. So Allison mentioned that Ithaca um, SNR report, and the report has actually since been um, made publicly available. And so I think what's interesting about that uh, that report by uh, by Ithaca, and it is mentioned in the slides. If you look at the slides afterwards, we do actually have links to all of the documents that we're referring to in this uh, presentation. Um, and I think you'll find if you've read it uh, that there's a lot of there's some overlap, but there's also some complementarity between what we found at the workshop and uh, what's highlighted in that report. As you can imagine, we brought together, as Allison said, over a hundred people from across Canada, IT research as well as library personnel, and you can imagine we had a wide gamut of issues and themes that came out of that. Uh, part of what we talked about was data security, um, ethics, the relationship between RDM and ethics offices. We talked about special considerations for smaller institutions and colleges, and we talked about special considerations for bilingual institutions and French language institutions operating in an environment that is largely English dominated. So, um, you know, there was a lot uh, that, we, that we went through and there will be a report coming out that will talk about all of these themes. But today I just wanna highlight uh, four themes for you. One is resources and capacity, intra-institutional collaboration, supporting researchers, and indigenous data sovereignty. Resources and capacity, as you can imagine, is probably one of our biggest concerns. It's, it's ubiquitous and it's arguably the biggest one that everyone has uh, on their minds. Now, there have been some successes. It's easy to, to talk about, oh, we don't have enough money, right? We don't have enough resources, we don't have enough money for infrastructure or for personnel, and that is true and that is a concern, but there have been some successes uh, that, uh, that we found amongst the cohort. Um, for one thing, the simple fact that we had to get together to create these strategies in the first place meant that there was coming together of campus partners, IT, the VPRI, so that's the, the, the Vice President of Research and Infrastructure, depending on, or, or innovation, depending on your university. And there was research support for funding uh, for RDM roles, for co-op students. There has been government funding for certain initiatives, so this workshop itself was funded by a SHRC grant, so that's a, you know, a federal government agency. And there's been national and regional infrastructure expert groups, um, the Digital Research Alliance of Canada, for example, Compute Ontario has had some grants. But most of these grant opportunities tend to be for one-off projects or for startup or for um, specific in a, um, instances of workshops and things like that, and there's still the challenge of ongoing funding. There's the challenge of finding the right personnel and being able to pay them what they're worth to do the work, um, and uh, active data storage, a lot of the same um, issues that other folks are dealing with. 
And uh, there is a, um, another session here at CNI this afternoon about making research data public and the cost of making research data public. So um, thanks to those folks, um, especially at ARL, who worked on that, uh, that report. And I definitely encourage folks to attend that conversation as well to talk, to really dig in a little bit deeper about, about the costs. Intra-institutional collaboration is also a major theme. Um, and that is the challenge of bringing together librarians, researchers, IT personnel, and research office folks. And I would say that the biggest success is probably, you know, in the workshop itself, the fact that we required every institution that was sending somebody to send three people. Nobody, you couldn't send one or two, you had to send three people. And of those three, one person had to be from the library, one had to be from IT, and one had to be from research. And that simple fact alone was the, probably the biggest success of the, um, of the event, not just of the event itself, but I think of the ramifications of going forward when those folks went back to their institutions, they had that, they had had that opportunity to build on that collaboration and to build on that need to continue working together. Um, of course, you got to keep up the momentum, right? Once you've come together to create the strategy, you've come together to attend a workshop, you've come together to talk about these things, maybe you've developed a, an advisory group or a steering committee, you have to keep having those advisory group meetings or those steering committee meetings, and you have to build the, keep the momentum going. So that's something that we're all facing uh, right now. Most of us support researchers in one form or another. Um, and uh, the simple fact of having to create an institutional strategy was a, a building block for success for better supporting researchers. But we are all hearing that researchers are facing an administrative burden that is becoming more and more burdensome to them. Uh, researchers are finding that they have to spend a lot of their time not just doing the research, but seeking the funding, um, and now doing RDM um, data management plans, for example, and thinking about Open scholarship, I mean, there's a lot that, that researchers have on their minds, and this is just one more example of the administrative burden that researchers are feeling, and as folks whose job it is to support researchers, uh, we need to keep finding ways to, to, do this, to do this better. I'd like to take a moment to talk about Indigenous data sovereignty. I know this is a very big issue in the Canadian landscape, and I'm not sure actually to what extent it is um, a major issue in the American landscape, so I would be interested in hearing a little bit more about that. In the tri-agency's RDM policy, there was a statement that all institutional strategies were required to have um, a recognition that research data that is created about or with indigenous communities or resources were required to have a recognition that those that data must be managed in accordance with principles that are agreed upon by those indigenous communities. And so this really brought to the forefront the issue of indigenous data sovereignty. And it moved the onus really away from, um, or in addition to researchers who who engage with Indigenous communities having to think about care principles, having to think about OCAP uh, principles, and needing to uh, not just have researchers think about those principles, but to have institutions take responsibility for educating researchers and for engaging with Indigenous communities. There has been a real uh, increased interest in OCAP, for those of you who aren't familiar, this, these are principles developed by the First Nations Information Governance Center in Canada. You may be familiar with similar principles, but the, the OCAP principles are about ownership, control, access, and possession of data. And um, there is an OCAP course that has been developed by FNIGC that people can take online. And one thing that we've done at U Ottawa is we introduced a cohort last year whereby we um, paid for a group of librarians and researchers to take the OCAP course, and we invited a representative from the FNIGC to come and have workshop with us a couple of times, are learning from that OCAP course and how we might apply that learning in our, our daily practice as librarians and as researchers. So this, I think, is a major success and a major move forward, the focus on Indigenous data sovereignty, but there is still a lot of work to be done. Um, there is the need for more education and awareness around the matters of Indigenous data sovereignty and management of Indigenous knowledge. 
and there are concerns about performative allyship. We can't have, um, it has to be meaningful. Like the, the, the collaboration that we do with indigenous communities has to be real, it has to be authentic, it has to be meaningful, and we have to do the work. And we have to recognize that there is a lot of work needs to be done, and um, we're a long way off. There were a number of recommendations that came out of the workshop, and we didn't focus on recommendations that governments could do or that, um, you know, that funders should do. It was more about recommendations for ourselves as a community. Where should we move forward? How should we continue to collaborate? Should we develop a community of practice? There are already some networks in place. I mentioned the Digital Research Alliance of Canada, and there are expert groups that are already active. Do we build upon those? Should we have another workshop? Um, so, you know, there was a, a lot of talk about really keeping that momentum going and importantly, not um, getting ourselves in a situation where it's really just librarians who are moving it forward, uh, but making sure that we're keeping the momentum of that integration between IT and research and, um, and library personnel. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Allison, who will talk about next steps and where we're moving forward. Hey, thanks, Caroline. So one of the things that was part of our SHRC um, grant proposal was to write a, like a paper coming out of this day. We didn't want to have a, a day where, you know, those just those who were able to travel came, we had this great conversation, and then, you know, there's no sharing out of what happened on that day with, with folks that maybe couldn't travel for whatever the different reasons are, they're just at a different stage, they don't have the funding, and, and so on. So. One of the big next steps is working on that. I'm calling it a discussion paper. I'm not exactly sure what shape it's going to take as report um, uh, terminology uh, has changed, but for now we'll call it a discussion paper. We have a group of people from the community, so not just those of us who are um, named on the grant, but also volunteers from within the, the folks who are at the workshop are have kind of decided on some sections. They've divided out the work. They're working away on it. And I think they're going to think about a different consultation process. We've been trying to make sure that, again, that we have people working on this paper that are not just from library, that we have that um, kind of office of research and um, IT perspective in there as well, because that's what we think this the strength is. Uh, I think there's going to be probably a sense of recommendations that are maybe at the institutional level, recommendations about collaboration, recommendations to um, uh, organizations like the Digital Research Alliance of Canada, recommendations to the tri-agencies, um, things that are going to maybe speak to kind of different levels of work that, that we see um, could be going forward. We also started up, people talked about needing to continue this community. Um, we have some great email lists, at least in libraries, where we know all our research data folks talk all the time, but that's not getting the people from um, the offices of research and IT. Uh, we did create a, a Slack. We'll monitor it to see if it's going to be used. I don't. I didn't see uh, great use of it yet, but so it may may end up going away. We'll just just see. It's not a um, uh, something. If it doesn't work, then we try something else. And I think we'll also have to do some more Zoom check-ins. And and one thing I've been noticing is it's a pretty low bar, right? You don't have to necessarily have a really big planning and agenda. You can create a Zoom, invite people to come, put them in breakout rooms, let them have conversations. So I think a few more of those along the way, whether it's hosted by us or other people in the community, um, that doesn't really matter. Uh, just making sure that people have those, those space for conversations. Because we learned in our last call that people are definitely at different stages of their implementation. Some people are just getting started with meetings. Some people have been meeting for a while. Um, and it's all going to depend on their institution and where they are. We also wanted to acknowledge that not everything that's happening in the Canadian community, of course, right now is coming out of this workshop. There's things that have just continued to happen that are great places to continue these conversations. So I know McMaster University just did a RDM community toolkit workshop that I'll hear about from my RDM librarian when I get back. Um, there's conferences coming up where there's opportunities to continue these conversations, such as the DRI Spring Connect that the Alliance is having. The Canadian Association of Research Administrators has their conference in May, and I know there's a lot of librarians that go to that. Um, and as Caroline mentioned, the Alliance has a network of experts um, who will continue to do work. They've been doing it for work for years, back when they were part of Portage as part of the Canadian Association of Research Library. They're now as part of the Alliance, and they continue to 
to work on the areas of RDM and engage out with the community. So there's lots of things that can happen. We just want to make sure that in some ways these conversations continue. And so with that, I think I'm going to stop there and um, go to opportunities um, for any of you that have some questions for or comments for us. That's great. But as Caroline mentioned, we also have some questions for you. What's happening in your organizations? We presented a few of the themes we heard at, at our workshop um, and some of the successes and challenges. What's happening there? Have you solved any of these challenges you just heard about on the things? And if so, I'm sure many in the audience would be, love to hear about that. Which ones? As Caroline said, how are you approaching uh, work around Indigenous data sovereignty? And any novel ways that you've uh, come up with for providing kind of resources for research data management at your institutional level. So, um, and also I'll just say we're happy to talk in more details if you want to do a workshop like this. Uh, I've, I've been pulling together information into a Google Doc just about how we organized it, so we'll, we'll be happy to share that with anyone as well. So thank you. So this is the large room problem, of, but there is a microphone there. If you have any comments, and say it could be questions for us, could be just sharing with uh, your colleagues what's happening around research data in your own institution. I'm not really good at silence, but I will try very much. There we go. <laughs> I'm I'm here to support you and break the ice. Um, so I'll just try to uh, um, explore a couple things with the questions, and I'll try to be quick. Quick, but um, our data management, well, our head of data management, is uh, working with uh, Office of Vice President of Research and with um, IRB and sort of the regulatory environment, and she's got peers across those and working on a, developing a data stewardship office within the library. Um, and I'll add on to something you said earlier that, that kind of perked my ears when you talked about the regulatory environment and its impact on researchers. Um, as I was talking with the, um, I guess, interim head of VPR, uh, the interim vice president, he was uh, also saying that he had three positions in his staff that were just devoted to tracking those regulations that come out every week from the federal government. So that was kind of a, um, a depressing aha for me when he told me that. So thank you. Thank you, that's something um, I will say we definitely heard. We know in, in libraries how much things are on our plate, all the things that are we're doing, um, but really hearing us from our Office of Research colleagues, whether they're in the grant funding cycle and, and um, the things that they're working on, whether they're on the ethics board side, um, just there's the amount of work that's on for our researchers, but also learning about all the things that are on the plate of our, our colleagues in the Office of Research and and again, trying to expand their capacity as these new kind of things come out that we all pretty much agree are good things, um, but how are we gonna expand um, to do that uh, it was definitely came out loud and clear um, from our colleagues in that environment too. While people are thinking, maybe I'll share one thing from Waterloo. Uh, in our Office of Research, we have, um, uh, senior manager for um, um, Indigenous research, and uh, she's been working on um, kind of an Indigenous data sovereignty implementation plan. Um, it's not public yet. She's kind of working towards that, working with our Office of Indigenous Relations. And it's not all about RDM, um, because Indigenous data sovereignty isn't just research data. It could be other data in the, in the university community. But... Um, it's been really valuable having her in that position and being able to, to work with her, but thinking about how can the library, um, so one of the things, for example, she needed to do was find out what's going on in other institutions. And I said, oh, we have a library co-op student here from Western. They could do that environmental scan for you. So trying to think about ways that the library and the things that we do and do really well, how can we support some of our colleagues um, in the Office of Research and making sure that they know that partnership is there, um, that we might not be the experts yet on certain areas, but we certainly have expertise on literature searches, environmental scans, things that we can help um, um, their work progress as well.
Yes, hi, I just had a simple question. Um, I guess I'm taking it into the context of the Francophone majority where I work in, and I was wondering if, if during the conference, was there any differences between the two that you came across? Because I, I hear the conversations that are happening at the federal level, but I find sometimes at the provincial level where I'm from, it's, it's sometimes it's not always the same conversation. So I was wondering if you might say a few words about that. Sure, I can speak to that. Um, so at the at the workshop, we have a, we had a couple of tables that were um, specifically dedicated to francophone conversations, right? So anyone who was willing to sit and have a conversation in French, we had uh, we had tables set up for that. And so I sat at that table um, a couple of times. And yeah, absolutely. One thing that we are finding is that our colleagues in Quebec, um, in francophone institutions, are feeling somewhat isolated. Um, they are feeling that their um, that their community of data management um, colleagues is fairly small because they tend to communicate with others who are speaking their same language, uh, literally. And so uh, there is a feeling of isolation amongst some of them. Um, and there is also a feeling of it being very difficult to hire and retain staff who are fluently bilingual, who have the skills and the expertise in RDM and in IT, and who are also fluently bilingual, um, it's it's an ongoing problem, right? The folks who have that level of expertise um, and language skills, they've got job opportunities and they can go anywhere in Canada. Um, and, and, and so retaining those staff is a constant problem. Um, so there aren't solutions uh, to that necessarily, but it's definitely an added concern of our Francophone colleagues in, in French and in bilingual institutions. So U Ottawa tries to uh, play a little bit of a leadership role in that area to the extent that we are able to, insofar as we are a bilingual institution and all of our librarians and IT personnel are bilingual, and so we are able to bring together bilingual communities. Uh, for example, the workshop uh, report that allison has been referring to is going to be translated and published in both French and English, and so we'll be doing the concordance to make sure that we, um, that we have a good translation and that we can continue the conversation in both languages. Hi, I'm Michael Vandenberg from Dalhousie University. Um, and around RDM at our university, one of the one of the new conversations that seems to be coming up in increasingly frequently is around research security. So that has um, suddenly captured the imagination of the university and um, is receiving funding and new positions and roles and has kind of inserted itself very directly in the research data and research management strategy of the university in, in a way that feels kind of abrupt. And I'm wondering if you've kind of encountered that with um, the uh, research data management strategies in either of your institutions as well, that this is, is suddenly looming large in that space in ways that maybe it hadn't like four or five years ago. I can uh, start. Uh, definitely, I will. I'm, I was probably similar across many um, institutions that um, uh, research security is, or as I think we like to call it, safeguarding research is on everybody's top of mind. Um, it hasn't, I, I mean, our strategy had already been. Um, written, we have our strategy and our goals, and I think in our space, we're thinking as RDM as just one of the many mitigation tools. So, I mean, there's going to be some things in research security which are totally outside our, our RDM and have to do with, you know, who, who you can collaborate with and, and some of those rules, but there might be pieces of having a research data management plan where as a researcher, you may be able to show your risk mitigation strategies and that through your data. So, we have um, a, the project manager on the um, research security team um, is going to be kind of sitting in on our RDM working group meetings just so that she's kind of aware of our conversations. She can maybe share kind of what some of their conversations are because there are some overlaps, but they're really, in a sense, different topics at the, at the same time. So we're just trying to keep the information flow um, going, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I would say one of the benefits of having collaboration within the institution is that we can influence or, or play a role with the, you know, 
in each other's spheres, if you will. Um, I was in a conversation uh, not too long ago with someone in the, the research office who said something like, oh, well, that, you know, research security, that's not RDM, that's a different thing. And I was like, oh, that's, that's you know, that's an interesting perspective because I don't see research security and RDM as different things. I see them as, you know, a Venn diagram with a lot of overlap. Um, and so uh, it was. It's interesting to hear that perspective, but it was also something that I was able to, you know, have that conversation with that person. But then also turn around and, and send a little note to, you know, one of the managers in IT who was on our RDM advisory committee and say, you know, can we just talk about this uh, research security and RDM thing uh, to make sure that they are really that there's some integration there. And we started having a conversation about a course that is like a, a little online course that all you Ottawa professors are required to take about um, cybersecurity. And we started talking about can we add an element to that course about security of research data and the importance of research data management and sort of link out to RDM, right? So not to take that course and turn it into an RDM course because it's about a lot more than just research data, but to make sure that research data is one of the elements that people are thinking about when they are thinking about security of data. So having those human connections are really important to be able to make sure that we're keeping those conversations together. That's really cool, thanks. So I see that we are at 10.30 uh, and I'm sure people want to have their breaks. So thanks for everybody who brought some, some of their comments in here. And again, Caroline and I are happy to, to talk to you um, if anyone's interested in anything else uh, in a more uh, informal setting than in a large room, uh, and thanks very much for your attention.